Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a beautiful poinsettia card using some of the new release products from Altenew. So I'm starting out here with the poinsettia cluster 3D embossing folder and I'm going to emboss a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel as well as a sheet of Gina K Designs masking paper. Once I have those done, I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way around the embossed image in the masking paper. So I will link down below in the description to everything that I'm using today in case you have any questions. And this masking paper is very thin, so it's super easy to cut all the way around the edges. It's not as hard as fussy cutting like out of cardstock. Plus, it's really easy to follow all of those raised edges of the masking paper. So once I have the entire image of the poinsettia cluster cut out, I'm going to go in and decide what leaves I want to be a different color. And this will make more sense as we continue on. So I'm just putting an X on all of the leaves that I want to be green. And I'm going to go in with my scissors and cut those out. Now, I do want to be careful not to cut any of the rest of the image. I just want to be sure to cut along the lines. And the reason is because when we're done, we're going to have some beautiful red poinsettias, but then we're going to have some green leaves poking out here and there, and it's going to look really awesome. So once I get all of those different leaves cut out, I can go ahead and put down my piece of masking paper that has all of the leaves that are going to be red and I can apply that on top of the piece of cardstock that I already embossed with the embossing folder. So this piece of cardstock is cut to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So this will be an A2 sized card. And once I get that down there, I can go in here with some Distress Oxide and color all of my leaves. Now I'm not worried about the edges because I am gonna cut out this whole image from the cardstock panel. So I went in with the mowed lawn and got all of the leaves and then I'm going to come in with some rustic wilderness and I'm going to add a little bit of shading here and there around the edges of the leaves. This is going to help to create even more dimension. It's not a necessary step. You're still going to get a beautiful card even if you just use one color, but if you use two colors, a shade and then a darker shade for the shading. It does look really, really nice when it's done. I'm using a smaller detail brush, which makes this process a lot easier. So once I have all of the green done, I can carefully peel up the masking paper. You do want to peel it up pretty carefully because you don't want to rip this because we're going to use it again in another step here in just a moment. So once I get that all up, I'm going to come in with those leaves that I cut out and I save those. I set them off to the side and then it's kind of like a little puzzle. I just have to figure out which leaf goes on which leaf. So I go in and I'm just applying those masking paper tops on all of the leaves. And once I have all of those covered, I'm going to take that original piece that we used and I'm going to go in with my scissors again and I'm going to cut out the centers of the poinsettia flowers. So I'm just going around. I'm not being super duper careful, careful here. I just want to make sure that those centers I'll be able to color a different color from the red leaves. So I've put down the centers there on each of those three poinsettia flowers and I'm going to go in now and color all of the leaves that are showing in red. I'm going to be using some more Distress Oxides. So I'm for the main color, I'm going to be using Barn Door, which is a really nice red. It's kind of a true red, I guess is what I would classify it as. And now I can just kind of go a little more bold and just get that color on there, cover all of those flowers. And then for my shading color, I am going to be using the brand new lumberjack plaid. Now the lumberjack plaid is a really, really beautiful color. If you haven't checked out the new color, I definitely recommend you take a look at it because it's just a really fun, festive holiday red color. I think it works really well with the barn door, especially to create some shading. So you can see I just went around each of the leaves here and there. 
So now I can peel up just the centers here and because I'm going to go in and color those. I am going to put back that large main piece just to make it a little bit easier on myself, but you certainly could try and just do this with a detail brush and not put the masking paper back on there. I just figure if I have the masking paper, let's use it. It, it makes life so much easier because you do not have to be super careful and it looks like you spent much longer than you actually do getting these colors down onto your cardstock. So for the centers, I'm gonna be using some mustard seed, again, in Distress Oxide. And once I get the mustard seed on there, I'm actually gonna go in with crushed olive. And that's because I wanna add a little bit of a green tone on top of the mustard seed. So I'm not gonna use very much of the crushed olive, just enough to kind of give it more of a green tone from that yellow tone of the mustard seed. This also could be done with squeezed lemonade or any other yellow or green, light greens that you have. You could even probably get away with twisted citron here, but I really wanted more of a muted yellow green because I thought it would go well in contrast to the red and the bright green of the other leaves. So once I get that little bit of crushed olive on there, I can pull everything off for the big red reveal, which is my favorite part when I get to go in and pull everything off. I don't know about you guys, uh, but it's, it's kind of magical, right? So pulling off all of this masking paper here, now you can see how that yellow is offset against the red of the leaves, and then we'll pull off the rest of the masking paper on those green leaves. And right now it still looks a little messy, but when we trim off the edges of the embossed image, it looks really gorgeous. It it's just kind of pops and you have this beautiful embossed image that it looks like you spent a really long time hand coloring uh, with tiny little detail brushes, but the magic is in that masking. So here I'm coming in with the scissors. And again, because this is an embossed image, it makes it much easier to cut around than when you're fussy cutting. Your scissors just kind of naturally fall where they need to cut. And if you're newer to making cards, you should know the best way to do this is to turn your paper, not your scissors. So you hold your paper and turn it as you're cutting to go along those lines. And that makes the whole process much easier and you get a much cleaner cut rather than if you tried to move your scissors instead of the paper. So you can see there now it's all cut out and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. So now we're gonna put together our background. Very simple, we're coming in here with some more Distress Oxide and we're using Peacock Feathers. And I've got a piece of cardstock here that's cut slightly larger than four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's because when I'm done, I am going to trim off the edges. But I'm coming up from the bottom and I'm working my way up towards the top because I want this to fade from a really dark solid tone of the peacock feathers to a very light kind of airy tone. And most of this will get covered up by that cluster, but the parts that are peeking through, it will be noticeable that it goes from dark on the bottom to light all the way on the top. So I trimmed that down and I've put some foam strips on the back of my beautiful poinsettia cluster there. And I'm just gonna pop this over the top of my background. So you'll see that gorgeous peacock feathers peeking out. And I think this is a beautiful color combination. It's not your standard kind of color combination, but I think the blue and the red and the green all work really well together. So I've got some white spray stain here, the picket fence spray stain and I'm just flicking a little bit here and there to kind of imitate snow on top of the flowers and I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now I'm going to use these gorgeous hot foil plates from Altenew. It's the Holiday Greetings Hot Foil Plate Set. I put them down here on my glimmer machine and then added some silver glimmer foil and then a piece of cardstock then my shim and my top plate hit the timer button 
through the magic of video editing, you do not have to wait for the timer to finish. Um, so then I just run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6. And it just, it's easy, so simple to hot foil. I think it can be kind of intimidating, but my main tip for you on that is to just run it through one time. You don't need to run it through multiple times. I find that I get the best result if I just run it through there one time. So now I can pull up my cardstock and peel off the foil and you're going to see these sentiments. Oh, they just look so gorgeous foiled. And I'm using the coordinating uh, die cuts here and these cut out the sentiments perfectly so that I can pop it up with some foam squares right on the front of my card. Now I like to use foam squares because they add some dimension to my card, but you certainly could glue all of these different pieces on there flat and not put any dimension. And it's still gonna look gorgeous because it has that embossed image with those poinsettia clusters. So I add a little jewel here in the center. You could add several, you could skip the jewels, whatever you would like, but there is the finished card. I think it came out beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit the notification bell so that you will be notified of future videos. Have a great day.